Hello, everybody. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. And uh, I got my second COVID shot yesterday. I'm feeling a little under the weather. Not terrible, but kind of low energy. What I did yesterday uh, in some downtime was I went and started to make some new samples for my Eurorack sample units, like the Nebula from Qubit, the Ericsson sample drum, the Morphogene. We've done a video where we've made some Morphogene samples before. And as I was going through contacts and just looking for cool things that I hadn't really played with a lot, I came across Arcus, this thing. Arcus is a really cool texture underscoring thing for contact. And I love it to death. And today we're going to be just playing with it, recording some samples with it, and uh, talking about preparing samples from something like this that will go into, you know, like any kind of sampler. I really, really believe strongly that making your own samples like this stuff for things like Morphogene and Octatrack and the Digitac or the Deluge is just really fun. And it's not hard. You don't really need to know a lot of music theory. You just need to be able to play some nice little clusters and use the expressive tools built in to our friends here. So, uh, I'm not going to dig a ton into what Arcus is, um, but I, I think it's worth explanation for, as far as I know. So we have three layers, right? Each layer can have uh, a selection of some form. So we can even have, I think this is not on one's really funny from the Vox. So let's just go ahead and pick some of these. And then this uh, control here, which is my mod wheel, obviously goes through the different layers. Let's see what happens after we've changed those. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Multiple layers. We have some uh, controls over things like envelope. Put this up. Let's change this to chamber strings flowing. That sounds nice, right? have all harps so it sounds like these are little uh like actual like pitch loops because they do speed up and slow down when you change the pitch as far as i can tell uh we have effects per channel and we have global effects as well and we have an adsr per layer so a pretty simple interface um to great effect. So let's go ahead and change this one to quiet longs. See what happens when we have two harps and a, uh, a dulcimer. Let's see, what else could I press here that would make this interesting? just such a simple idea uh, mixing these layers that are like you know kind of pre-programmed for you but it's really 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 pretty and then we're gonna go through some of the presets and just play a bit you know because that's really what's fun here for me is playing this and talking about uh, how to play it you know the concept of safe notes like perfect fifths perfect fourths super tonic um, those are all very safe to play uh, you can get cheeky and put in a sixth if you want. And then shifting around where those are, like the inversion of those, like. 
<laughs> and then when you get it into your um, your sampling environment, you know, it's what you put underneath it, the tonic that you put underneath it that matters um, in terms of like how you interpret the pitch. So for instance, let's see, I don't know if this is... Ooh, that is straight up Ziggurros from Aegis Burnham. I'm a big fan of anything that makes me sound like an Icelandic uh, soundtrack composer without much work. And uh, this is certainly filling that void inside me, that Icelandic void. Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and play around with some other stuff. I'll find some good stuff and we will record it. Um, I'm just going to hit record now. We're going to be resampling everything that I'm doing from Arcus on this resample channel right here. This is decidedly not a safe note cluster, but it is a very cool interval that's appropriate for this instrumentation. It is a tonic, a semitone above that, which gives that instant sort of a quote unquote ethnic Arabian feel. And then we can do uh, a perfect fifth, which is also very, very appropriate. We can go down to a major third, which is the next component. Right there, it all feels really nice, doesn't it? You can imagine getting this into something like Morphogene. How fun it would be to play with, right? It's just, what a cool idea for an instrument, right? It makes me feel, it makes me feel like a, a, a fancy pants composer, right? And I think anything that can make that kind of thing. Accessible to someone like me who has sort of tenuous grasp of how compos real composition works is, is a good thing. All of these um, these contact instruments that have uh, sort of, well, all the multi-sample contact instruments, the ones that, um, you know, are more geared towards these sort of like, uh, you know, orchestral or soundtracky tools, things with organic uh, instrumentation, they all uh, really, really benefit from uh, making sure that you play around with things like the mod wheel on the expression wheel uh, or expression strip in this case. So the mod wheel is what's giving us this movement right here which obviously has a really prodigious effect. And then we have the strip, which also has an effect. So I can go all the way over here. And be still quiet. <laughs> depending on where this strip is. So, pretty cool, right? Oh, that's cool. God, that's beautiful, Jesus. This is the kind of stuff that I actually kind of strive for. In my modular work, this flowing reinterpretation of intervals. This is almost goosebump territory in terms of how it's making me feel right now. I think of the 
COVID shot is having an effect on my brain. All right, let's resolve this. This would be a D. That's that's splendid. I'm going to make all these samples available, by the way, to patrons. Um, and I might make a uh, Morphogene reel or two out of them. I guess there's some legal issues, possibly, with the EULA with this stuff, uh, redistributing samples that you make with it, which I think is a little silly, <laughs> but uh, I'll have to look into that and see. Um, I'll put a link in the description if they're there, but otherwise check out my Patreon if you want to if you want to snag these. So really cool soundscape. Really like this water phone stuff that they have. I'm just literally playing two notes right now. I just added a third. The thing I like about this stuff is that I have to be careful with that strip because it can really, really pull the volume down if you touch it wrong. The thing I like about this stuff is that it, uh, when you put it into something like Nebula or Morphogene, which are both stereo, you get this insanely wonderful texture that's really difficult to put into modular otherwise. Um, and having that control and having that sort of new compositional feeling, that sort of like organic soundtrack feeling that you can add as a texture and manipulate with the modular tools is really, really cool. Next up, accelerating particles. We have a lot of <laughs> presets here. We're not going to get through all of them. I just wanted to sit and play some of these for you a little bit. Playing with the strip now to give us more of that intensity. At first, I thought they strip uh, just controlled volume, but it's much more than volume. It, there's, an, there's an intensity to the patch, which is really wonderful. You will see that we have um, an LFO in the middle here, and it will animate uh, portions of our interface here, which is pretty neat. Alien communications. Ooh. Oh, uh, yeah. So we can slow the LFO down. And its intensity. <laughs> this is one of those things that actually benefits from the uh, pitch wheel. Okay, so you can see the little LFO moving around there, which is pretty neat. We talked a little bit about avoiding things like major or minor thirds or major sevenths. Um, in order to keep this mutable in terms of what you can put underneath it as a tonic. So if I remove the major thirds and the major seventh, I'm left with a tonic and fifth. And, you know, it's okay. There's our perfect fourth and our super tonic. But sometimes you hit something like this and you really feel like it might feel 
benefit from some form of major or minor. And that's fine. Like, you know, when you bring the patch up in your uh, in your sampler of choice, you'll just compose around that, you know? It's all good. So, let's see. The cool thing about what we had played before was that we had a C major down here. But we can add a uh, the notes of a E minor on top. And it gives us a nice melancholy feeling. I think you will notice that when we do stick to things like the perfect fourth and the supertonic and the perfect fifth, that we do get a sound that sounds like it belongs in a soundtrack. So right now we are tonic, fourth, supertonic, fourth, fifth, supertonic. And sounds pretty good. So I think I know why they call this an underscore as opposed to, I guess, just scoring. It really does feel like something wants to get played over it. Like, it's not an obtrusive sound, right? This is a bed. You could have like a monologue over this. Or you could put something like a cello or something like that over with. I actually have a cello loaded up. We'll try that in a smidge. I just, <laughs> anyways, that's what cello sounds like over hop. I just realized that I was actually still triggering our Arcus there uh, with the MIDI and it was playing back. So uh, that was kind of dumb. That does sound like Arctic Plains. David Attenborough? I would love for you to step into this anytime, you know? The Arctic. Untouched by man. Home to only the hardiest. But disappearing. These are the voyages of the starship Attenborough. Planet Earth. I know it's boring to stick around in C for the whole time. And I have. I mean, I switched it up, you know. I played some... D as our root note and A. But when you get these things into your sampler, you know, you're going to uh, not necessarily want to repitch your entire patch around a key change in your modular. So, sticking to the same key while boring is useful.
that's an interesting. I wouldn't think that would work. Go minor sixth, perfect fifth, perfect fourth, major third. If I change my tonic note on the right hand side, we start to. Oh, you know why? Because this is actually insinuating that, which is a uh, minor, an E minor. So we're actually pretending to be an E minor. Like a rusty squeeze box. That's what my date said last night. Doesn't sound anything like what. A rusty squeeze box sounds like to me. I would expect a lot more wet, sort of like squishing sounds. It is nice though. I had an expression pedal hooked up to this, but man, the Moog expression pedal is really tweaky. Really, though, what you'd want is an expression pedal hooked up to this so that you could do all this fun stuff with your feet while you were playing, so you can kind of conduct the uh, intensity of the orchestra with your feet. That'd be cool. contact instrument. Let's do one more. I just want to give a big shout out to whoever designed this plugin. This is not a sponsored video, I just really wanted to show you all, but I am going to be checking out to see what else uh, Orchestral Tools does, because while I am not a composer uh, for film, TV, and or video games, um, I need these textures in my life. This is something that I really enjoy putting into other pieces. Um, and Modular has really given me an opportunity to do that because um, of the abstract sort of nature of what Modular can do. All bets are off, you know, like you don't have to do a particular genre. You can mix and match things. So being able to sit with you here and do these sort of free-flowing experiments with these absolutely just beautiful textures and then bring it into my modular system and play around with it, recontextualize it is one of my favorite things in the whole world to do. Oh, that's nice. Jesus. Just sustained, inverted D minor on my right hand, and then uh, playing through the scale on my left. And the plugin does the rest. of our tonic note, meaning the low note, and we just go back to our suspended chord, which gives a feeling of floating. Anything can happen, but we are colored by the timbre and our note choices.
Thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you're doing good. I hope you've had your second COVID shot. Check the links in the description if you'd like to grab all these samples and also a link to Arcus. Because for fuck's sake, this is wonderful. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. And I hope you have a wonderful day.